everyone and welcome to Adult Coloring for UFOs. Today, you guys, I'm going to start doing a how-to video and I'm going to be showing you how I use my Distress Inks for my coloring pages. This was a requested video, so if you guys can please leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't. It will make me so so very very happy so today i want to show you guys this and i was going to bunch everything together in one video but i decided not to do that i am going to be showing you on this video how i use distress inks for the background of my adult coloring pages which i love to use them for that next week i'm going to be doing another video on how i use distress inks to actually color um no, I don't think I'm the best at this or anything like that, but it was a requested video and um, this is just me showing you how I do it. So there you go. And it should be a lot of fun. Distress inks are very fun. Uh, they are a inking pad. They are water-based. Um, so in a coloring book, if it's double-sided, they shouldn't go through the next page um just because again they're water-based and they come in two different sizes they come in this big size right here and they also come in these little cute squares usually these squares you can find them in a four pack that looks like this And I honestly try to just get these smaller ones because it comes with a lot of ink and you get more colors for your buck. And let's say you use one color a lot. What you could do is just buy the refill for it. They have refill drops. So, you know, there's nothing to worry about it. I just have two of these really big ones. So I wanted to show you the tools that you can use for the distress inks uh, the first tool is something like this it's a wooden thingamabobber applicator with sponges on the tip the sponges are very soft and I feel like they move the ink really well you could also get the sponges from this set or a set like this another way you could use the distress inks is with like little brushes like this that you could find on Amazon and they just they're really really soft you probably see them more in this color and um the Distress Ink brand, Ranger, they actually make another applicator that's a rectangle. I don't have that one just because I think it's too chunky and too big for what I use Distress Inks for. And they also come with a blending tool, which is just like a little pole and it's very detailed. I wish I would have had that for this video, but I couldn't find it. I did make some of my own. like this now the only problem with this is that the sponge is not the same as this sponge so it doesn't move the ink the same way but they do get the job done another thing that you could get from this brand for your distress inks is a mister now, I wouldn't have paid so much money for just a water bottle that missed water. <laughs> uh, but it was actually hard for me to find a water mister that wasn't, you know, around the same price as this. So I just decided to get this one because, I mean, why not? And then the last tool that you could get for your Distress Inks, or the one that I'm gonna show you, is this splatter, and I just bought it for this video also. 
Obviously, you don't need it, but they sold it, and I decided to give it a try with you guys in this video. It's a splatter brush. Alrighty, so let's get started. Okay, you guys, so you guys can't say I'm not dedicated to this video. I spent last night coloring four different pictures to demonstrate how I do uh, backgrounds with distress inks. And just to give you a little sneak peek of what's coming next week, I colored in the pictures with distress inks also. So as you can see, this is done 100% with distress inks except for the skin. I don't do skin with distress inks. And then this little highlight, I could have done it with distress ink, but I just got a little alcohol marker and did that. And I also colored this one. The difference with this one is it has pencil. So I did a layer of distress ink and then I went on top and added some pencil. So there's the difference, basically just distress ink distress ink with pencil prismacolor pencils I used and then just to show you a different illustration and uh, this is gray cell I colored another one so this is done with distress inks my cute little squirrel with pencils on top and then this is done with just Distress inks, except for the skin. <laughs> so as you can see, it looks really, really cool. And it's fast enough that I was able to do all of these the same night. So let's start the demonstration of the backgrounds. I think we're going to work on this one first. Okay, so for this picture, I kind of want it to look like a magical sky. So we're going to use these colors, pickled raspberry, seedless preserves, chipped sapphire, and salty ocean. Now I might add some colors, I might take some away. Oh, and also the black one, which is just black, I mean. Okay, for this one, we're going to play around with the brushes. So I'm not gonna use this big one. I'm gonna go in first with this one. Make sure you have a little towel around. Okay, I'm gonna go in with purple. Just like that. Now you could tap it on a palette, piece of glass, or paper just to blot it. And very softly, I'm going to start blending this color. You see that? The pressure is very, very soft. And the reason I like to put it on this glass cutting board is because if I would have put it in the paper, this ink would have been, you know, I wouldn't be able to use it anymore. But since I put it here, I could pick it up again and add more color. So this is something you're going to have to play around with. I could start telling when I need to add more pressure. Okay. You see how that's coming out. And I think that with the gray scale, it looks very beautiful. We're just going to work on the top right now. Mm, 
Okay. I'm grabbing my little towel. I'm just going to clean this off. I mean, it's stained, but nothing is coming out. Then I'm going to go ahead and use the chipped sapphire. Same little brush. This color is dark, so I'm going to be careful at first. I'm just putting it where I want, where I think it would look good. Blending it in. Uh-oh, I got some here. They can be messy sometimes. Um, like yesterday or last night when I was coloring, I had um, distress inks all over my hand. But it's nothing a little soap and water can't handle, so you'll be fine. But that already I think looks super pretty. But I'm gonna add more colors just for fun. Again, grabbing this, going like that. Now, if you're going from a dark color like this to a very light one, I don't know how that would work. These brushes, you could wash them. Um, so that's probably what I would do. But since it's the same project, I don't mind. I'm going to get a, a lighter blue just to add some fun. And this is a lot of fun, you guys. Like, I am being 100% honest with you. I hope you guys are doing well. And if you haven't tried Distress Inks, I hope you guys give it a try. I'm doing good. My husband has the day off tomorrow, so that's fun and exciting. Okay, so there, I just added a little bit of blue. And the reason I tap it here first is to, oh my God, disgusting, um, to not get such a harsh line. So let me show you. If I just went like this and I did that, it's fine because it's the brush, but especially with the sponge, I would get a very harsh line. So it's just easier to do this to get a very blended look. Do you see that? Okay, if I need it to be darker, just go over it again. Can you see? That's without blotting it. This is blotting it and then just adding more color. And this is with the brush. Okay, I'm gonna do, should I add black to this? I'm kind of scared, to be honest. Oh God, look, I'm adding, <laughs> I open it and then I just rub my finger on it. I'm gonna add a little bit of black just to show you, obviously be careful. Super careful with this. Because there's already some black going on with the grayscale. I just want a little bit more. And this is basically what you do you just add layers and layers until you get the effect that you want.
And then what's fun is that on top of this, you could add pencil, you could add um, gel pen, Posca pen, stickles. So I'm going to go ahead and work on the rest of the page. Add some more color to it. This is why it's fun, because it's, oh, I lost some color. I'm gonna add some more. You could be watching some YouTube while doing this, and it's really, really satisfying and relaxing. Okay, and it's super easy. So there I am, adding some more color. I'm doing it kind of fast because I want to move on to the other ones. Okay. I'm gonna add some blue. I want to show you the back also. Look at how pretty that looks. Looks like she's floating in space. I love it. Okay, let me show you the back really quick. So there's the marker for the skin. But the distress ink does not go through. And this is how the picture came out. I did exactly what I did on the top, I did in the bottom, same colors, same application. And then I went really quick with a gel pen and I colored in this ring right here. And I love how this came out. If you wanted, you could add like white Posca pen for like little stars. For this picture, I like it like this. And yeah, that is pretty much my first uh, example of how I use the stressings for my backgrounds. Okay, now I'm going to be working on this picture and we're going to do this little corner. Um, I want it to look very dark, so I'm going to do a full layer of uh, gathered twigs. And this is the cool thing also about distress inks is that the colors mix in or mix very well. I'm going to get this big brush to do like a wash of color. You could do it with these tools, but just for time, I'm going to do it like this. Oof. This method is just going to be actually using the sponges. If you don't have these brushes, it's fine. I just wanted a full on color to get us going faster. Alrighty, okay. So now we're going to get these. I'm just going to clean out her area. You see, very fast. And I'm gonna go in with this color, um, Fired Brick. So I want it to look like a blood moon, very red and scary. So I'm gonna pack some color in. dab it out there and softly start scooting <laughs> scooting the color or just like kind of brushing the color T -t -t -t. 
I'm not going like this. I'm not going, I'm doing this. Especially once I dab it first on the ink. I'm very careful because I don't know exactly how much ink got on the pad. So that's especially when I'm careful. Towards the end, then I start blending it and being a little bit more rough because I know there's not that much ink. Okay. Okay, that's our second layer of Distress Inks. Now I'm going to get our other color, Age Mahogany. And again, the darker the color is, the scarier it is. how it's looking pretty much just working with this edge right here I want it to be darker so I'm adding little by little and then pressing on it and blending it out I want some more color here, so I'm gonna go with whatever's left here. And just dab it. Cool. Okay, can you imagine this all around? Okay. And then the only thing you have to do is take it off and then put it right here. You don't have to have a spongy for each color, but I do recommend it because even at first, it might seem like it's not picking up as much color, uh, but once your sponge, you use it more and more. Let me show you right here. Um, the ink that's already in here it kind of reactivates once you dab it on the distress ink and you'll need you'll need as much when it's a clean new spongy you need a little bit more so this is the black one and obviously we want to be careful you know even with black pencils or black markers We're all super gentle and super careful. So I definitely like, as you can see, ooh, my glass method because um, I tried doing it with paper. And of course it works, but for me, this works better. Oh, that looks so spooky. I love it. You see how the colors are just blending and becoming like a fog. It's beautiful.
Alrighty. Now we can obviously go back. And if you're like, oh, that kind of lost the redness, then we could go back to our fire brick. And go over that color. There. More of that red came out. Which is good because I want it to look more red than black. Okay. I like this. And this is kind of what I was going for. Okay. Now I'm going to do it to the entire page. It's gonna look so creepy and cool. <laughs> Ooh, look at this one. Isn't it so pretty? So all you guys saw was this side. Then I went ahead, did this side like this one. And then I dragged the color down, but I didn't add as much black. I just did that around the moon. And then on the moon, I just got uh, some of the light color and smudged it on it. And now the reflection, the highlight that I originally did on her makes sense. I love, love how the sky came out. It looks so cool. I love it, love it, love it, love it. So this is a second example. I think second. <laughs> Okay, everyone, so I showed you how to do uh, backgrounds of distress inks with the brushes and also with the sponge. Now I'm going to show you how to do distress inks with stencils. So these are some of the colors that I think I used for this unicorn. And I got some stencils from Amazon. I don't know if you guys could see them. So I, I thought it would be fun to add a few stencils here and there to her and show you how I do that. So I think I want first a very light color. We're going to do many things on this page. First thing is stencils. So I'm going to get right here. And I don't want them to be super straight. So that should be fine. Now I'm going to do this with a brush. Just because I feel like it would be a lot easier than with the sponge. The thing with the sponge is that um, it could tug on the stencil. This color, or it's really, really light, or it's dry. Sometimes you think that the color is dry, but in reality it's just because it's really, really light. I should have taped this down. I don't know where the tape is at. Let's see how it comes out. <laughs> now, if I was using a darker color, this wouldn't take as long, but I wanted a very light, light color. Oopsies. Um, that's a little hard. Okay. 
Alrighty. There's one right here. Let's lift it up. So cute. As you can see. Just for a look. If you want to, you can wipe it down. I don't think gonna matter because it's not a dark color but if it was you would want to wipe it down before putting it on your paper then I'm gonna add some here let me look for the tape and then I'll be right back okay so add some tape and it should be a lot easier can we have silence in the studio please Oh my god, that made me, I laughed and it made me slip off of my chair almost. Okay. So getting that color. Oh god. Getting that color in. Now again, if this was darker color you wouldn't have to be rubbing it that way so please be careful it's just this color is very very light did I tell you what color it is it's um sponge sugar that sounds I don't know weird They're gonna look like little um, cloud hearts. It's just so cute. I'm gonna add a little bit more to this one over here. Okay. Time to reveal. I imagine I ripped the paper. Alrighty. And here it is. Oh, that's so cute. So, here I don't like this crazy line. So, I'm just going to grab the little brush. And blend it in. Obviously, you don't have to. That's just what I want to do. I'm not done with this page. We're going to be doing lots of other stuff to it. Right now, I'm just doing little extra things. Because I want to. Just eyeballing it. Okay, I'm gonna get a piece of paper and I'll be back. Okay guys, now it's time to get messy and have fun. So I already did that, but we have to have more color, more craziness. Obviously, if you want to, you can leave it like this. It's very simple, very cute. Put the date on it, move on. But we're gonna add more and you'll see. So I cut out a little stencil of my unicorn girl and I'm gonna put some tape. Now, so it won't stick on either or the paper. I'm just going to do this, get some of the tackiness off. 
That way I don't ruin my picture. We're gonna somewhat cover her to protect her from the splatter. Good enough, good enough, perfect. Okay, so like I said, you could do this or you could do what I'm going to do next on its own. You use your creativity and have fun with it. Okay, so once I have her covered, I'm going to start with, um, let's do this pink. It's called uh, Festive Berries. And we're just going to blot this right here. Oof, that's a lot. With our little mister. You see how it becomes kind of like watercolor? Okay. Let's add a little bit more water. I'm gonna put it here. Now, ready to have some splatter fun. And this works perfect for the splatter effects. And right now I'm doing it with very um, fun colors, but just imagine doing it with browns and like greens, make the paper look aged up. I'm going to use now Spice Marmalada. No. <laughs> what was that? Speak. <laughs> I have a silly monkey watching. So, again, hope you guys could see. I need a little bit more. Oh, that was a bit much in one spot. You know what? It's fine. And yeah, the hearts are kind of blending in, but I don't mind. I wanted it to look like that. And this is why we put a stencil on top of our girl. Now again, if you're using really dark colors, you can go ahead and rinse this off, but I'm fine. Now we're going to add some scattered straw. This might not be yellow enough, so we're going to mix some colors. Uh, what do I have here? mustard seed that's more of a neon okay spray stir it up <laughs> and start
Now with this picture, I'm just doing everything on camera because it doesn't make sense to go through this whole process outside of the camera. Okay, do the same thing, clean it off, no thread. Now this looks cool already. Mm, should I add some blue? I think we are. I think we are. I'm just going to water down the blue. Ugh, okay. Stamp, stamp. And the blue is broken china. Oh yeah, that's gonna be pretty. Looks like water. Okay, we need more blue, for sure. blue but not that light You don't want your finger in there you could just grab the end of a brush but I don't mind getting my hands dirty the last color I'm going to do is this very purple very pretty lila This is a very light color, so we're only going to add a little bit of water just to get it running. We're going to do it closer to the paper just so I could actually get on. Oh, this looks like a fun, colorful of greatness with a little bit of hearts peeking through which I do like all right easy cleanup now just to show you one other thing you could do if you want to go ahead and let it dry I think my paper is fine I'm going to grab the mister and spray it directly because it is water based it will lift up the color so I'm gonna grab this and just take off the excess water do it down here pat it down This water method looks really cool if it's like a solid color. Maybe on this pattern it's a little bit hard to see. But I still think it adds a cool effect to it. Let's see what it looks like. It's ready. Da -da -da -da. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, that is so very cute. I love it. I love it, I love it. So, one thing you could do, if you think you need more dots somewhere, is just go 
directly to the color with one of these tools. I think these are, um, how do you call it? Clay tools, molding tools, I don't know. I originally got them for pastels, but I like to use them for distressing sputter. Okay, and do you see the little dots? Uh oh. <gasps> the little dots it's making. Very light. We don't want anything too harsh. Okay. Just in case I feel like I need more purple or to get closer to the actual picture. Okay, you could do that with any color. And this one pretty much looks the same. Uh, I just went ahead and colored in her eyes. Did her horn with some gel pen, added some highlight, but you can't really tell because the picture is already super light. My husband says that she looks like she made a mess and she's like looking sad. <laughs> I love how this one came out with the little peekaboo stencils and the splatter. Really, really cool. And remember, you can use any colors you want. These are very bright and fun, but you can use dark, neutral, whatever. <laughs> Okay guys, the fun is not over. Last one I'm going to do today is going to be with my little squirrel that's so, so cute. I wish I would have done the squirrel a different color because it kind of looks very real and it looks like a dead squirrel. And that's kind of sad. <laughs> okay, so moving on. <laughs> I'm sorry help it it's so so cute but then I realized that it's a costume and I'm like oh dark okay so I'm going to use these little papers that my lovely husband made for me and they're supposed to be like little clouds so I have a b c d okay and I think you guys know what I'm going to do I'm gonna get broken china and I could use the brushes but I'm going to use this and if you have more stencils you could go ahead and do the clouds and then add trees and all of that good stuff let me zoom you in a little bit I'm going in first with a That was too dark, you saw that? It's fine, we'll just blend it out. And there we go. Super pretty. Love it. I'm gonna go on with B, why not? We'll see. stick to the same 
Distress Ink. Oh, I'm moving it a little bit. See, I learned my lesson right here, and now I'm making sure I blot my Distress Ink. Going back with A. Look at that. Here on the edge, if you don't want it to just be plain white, add whatever's left over from the board or your plate, whatever you're using, your palette, piece of plastic. <laughs> Darken that up a little bit. Okay, and just mess around with it and play around with it. Okay, and this is my finished squirrel. I just went ahead and added more clouds, added a little stencil here, and then um, with pencil, I added a little shadow, and then gave it a wash of uh, distress inks. So, yeah, that is pretty much the end of my video you guys thank you so much for watching i hope this was helpful i hope that if you were curious about distress inks this video has helped you uh remember that next week i'm going to be posting a picture i mean a video of how i color with distress inks um it's also going to be a lots of fun so definitely stay tuned once again please guys like this video and subscribe if you haven't thank you so 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 much for hanging out with your favorite ufo and i'll see you guys in my next video bye